So I'm going to show you the glass that I have gotten to make into sea glass with my rock tumbler. Um, a lot of this either came from an estate sale or a thrift store or something like this glass bottle that was in the recycling. So they're very cheap. Like, so here's the first thing. This red plate was $1, but it was 50% off the whole estate sale, so this was only 50 cents. Um, it's fairly thick, so I think it could make some good pieces of sea glass that I can make into jewelry. I also got these three glass textured dishes. Um, they were $3.99 together for all three of them. And I love the color and I think the texture is going to end up really neat looking when they get tumbled in the rock tumbler. Next, I got this little bottle with a cork in it. Um, it says $2.99. I think it was on sale. Uh, this was from a thrift store. And it has a pattern and it's quite heavy and thicker. And I like the color. I think that'll make some good sea glass. There's also this vase, um, which was $0.95. Cents. Um, and I think that was on sale too, so it's a beautiful purple color. Now, I'm not sure, if you look at the bottom, you can see that it's still kind of clear. So I don't know if the entire glass is actually purple or if it's just been colored with, uh, on the inside, like painted. If I look at this right away, I can tell that it's 100% blue. It's dark on the edges. It's solidly blue. So I know that when I put this in the rock tumbler, paint's not going to chip off and it's going to stay blue. Unlike this one, I'm unsure. I really hope it's purple because this is the only purple glass I could find. This is an example of something you should look for to make sure that the glass color is authentic. You can see here a clear ring where the colorant has already flaked off. Next, I have this four-pack of bald mason jars that, as you can see, was marked $8, but it was on sale half off, so it was $4, so a dollar each. Um, I'm probably going to keep one of these, but I'm going to tumble the rest. You can also see on this one, the whole thing's blue, so you know that the glass is all blue. And it has some texture. I think most of it will come off in the rock tumbler. And it's pretty thick too. So I think I'll make some nice jewelry pieces. And then there's also this green glass bottle. Um, Sprite comes in green bottles and a lot of things like that. So I took the label off. Um, and it still has a little sticky residue. But I don't think that's going to be much of a concern after it's been tumbling in the rock tumbler for a few days. So I'd just like to say one more time, the total for all of this, including tax, was about $15 for all of this glass. Um, so it was not very expensive. Um, I'm going to be able to make a lot of sea glass out of it. So the next step will be, first I'm going to get some wet paper towels and wash off these labels as, much, as best as I can even though they'll probably come off in the rock tumbler and then we will be smashing them into pieces and picking which pieces to put in the rock tumbler. For breaking the glass always wear protective gloves and safety glasses. I covered the glass piece with an old towel to keep glass pieces from flying everywhere. Then I used this hammer to smash the glass. I hit the bottle a few extra times since I wanted fairly small pieces I could use for jewelry.
Next, I use this tool called a nipper to cut off pointed pieces of the glass. These aren't necessarily essential, but they're really handy, and this way you don't need to tumble for as long. Then I sorted out the pieces I wanted to keep for tumbling and the pieces I needed to break a little more. I moved on to the purple vase that I was skeptical of. After breaking it, I could see the completely clear bottom and I could see the purple paint on the glass. I've realized that most food containers like bowls, jars, and plates won't have a fake color because then they couldn't be eaten off. That's why I would probably stay away from the vases. I just continued breaking all the glass pieces I had and sorting them. After all of the glass was broken, I poured half of the glass into each of the tumbler barrels. filled them each with enough water to cover all of the glass. For the abrasive, I added a fine sand and then some small pebbles. Since I'm new to this, I really just eyeballed the proportions, but made sure to put even amounts in each barrel. Then I decided it needed a little bit more. At the end of filling them, the barrels were not full all the way because there still needs to be space for it to tumble. I screwed on the lids nice and tight so that nothing would leak, and then it was time to tumble. Thank you.
add a container of water in a barrel. I removed the lid and began rinsing and examining the sea glass. I did the same brief cleaning process on the other barrel as well. Okay, so here are the two bins, um, each from the two rock tumblers. Um, this is the first one, it had more glass. This is the other one. So, um, these ones have been drying for a little bit more time. So you can kind of see how they're starting to have that sea foam, foggy look on them. Uh, they're still a little wet, so you can't really see 100%, but like that one, you can see it's getting foggy, um, which is the goal, kind of. Um, so this was the green soda bottle, this was the light blue mason jar, this was the small blue container with a cork in it. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, and it had this type of design on it. I don't know how you can see that. Um, yeah, it had this really thick base of the container. Um, there's some more interesting pieces from the soda bottle. And then one of the little glass turquoise bowls. And if you can remember what the other ones looked like before, um, they were a lot darker, so they got lighter in the tumbler. Um, it's like this is a lot lighter than it used to be. And obviously the thinner a piece is, the lighter it's going to be. So th that's why this one's still kind of dark, you know, because it's a fairly thick piece. Um, there are no sharp ends, so I tumbled them for about a day and a half. Um, I checked them after... Uh, after the night, for about half a day, I checked them and they were still a little bit sharp, so we let them go for a whole full day. Um, so here's that red plate. I really like how the red turned out. Um, they're not, they look like rubies almost, or garnet stones. They're not as foggy as the other pieces, but they have had less time to dry since I took them out second. So, they might get a little foggier. Then there was the blue cup, which was a little lighter than that blue container with a cork. Um, so, it's a little lighter too. Although, depending on what thickness of a piece you get, they're very, very similar in shade. Now, this piece is, if you can't tell, from the purple glass vase. Um, obviously we guessed correctly and it was just kind of painted purple on the inside. So this is what it looks like because all the color came off. And this is the bottom of that. You can see the little ridges. Um, the clear pieces, you know, they're still kind of pretty and interesting. I would have much rather preferred to have the purple, um, but I kind of knew they were going to become clear. Here is the final result of the dried sea glass. You can see now that it's dried that they have more of a foggy color. That's all for part one of my sea glass jewelry endeavor. 
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll know when I post part two of turning these beautiful stones into jewelry. Thank you.